They can hear you, Ed. Hi, guys. <laughs> Hello. The paint sploosh is always me, the cue for me saying that. Normally, you guys don't hear me say it, but now, now, because Justin decided we were all live, you could hear me go sploosh. So, hi. Hello. It's a surprise visitation by Aaron Lovejoy. Not so hello, surprising. Oh, hello, hello. Yes. Well, it's a surprise that I'm actually here. Yeah, <laughs> yes, this is true. This is true. It almost didn't happen. Luckily, the gods were uh, were watching over us. That's right. That's right. Yes, yes. So, slight accident on the way uh, to Santa Fe, New Mexico, and then we detoured back to here. So yeah, right, exactly. Out. So how does that work? Did your car just disapparate and a magically a new one appeared like in a video game? or um, Magically a much smaller one appeared. <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> hey. like, man, we need a tank. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, and if you didn't see, guys, that's a, the move out has a command. It's exclamation point Lovejoy, and that'll tell you where to find Aaron on Patreon mm. and his miniature monthly and all that stuff. Yeah. If you go to my Facebook page, you can see some really good pictures of the crash on Monday. Oh, no. Um, but I'm sure if you tune in to Reaper Live tonight, um, we're going to talk all about it. Because oh, yeah. Because Ron said, you're going to tell a story once, and then we're going to move it on. So that's what we're going to do. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> exactly. So, uh-oh, people are asking you, Aaron, how's the dragon? How's the... <laughs> What dragon? <laughs> oh, no. Um, Reaper Live, we actually have what's left of the dragon, and we'll be showing that, too. So definitely tune in for that, because it's going to be interesting. The terrible uh, aftermath of what happens to a dragon in a car crash, yeah, apparently. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, so there we go. So uh, so welcome, everybody. Uh, yay, everybody. Hey, and it's Michael Proctor, Clever Crow Studio. He's yeah, glad Michael. you are safe. I'm glad I'm safe, too, Michael. Yes. Um, All right. If you don't know, Michael has the softest lips in the industry. <laughs> I, be I believe that. It's going to um, be that kind of show, guys. And don't ask how I know that. <laughs> <laughs> we have Aaron Lovejoy. It's going to be that kind of show. <laughs> All right. So actually, uh, do, 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 do. I, should, uh, I should recap really quick other shows to watch. Today is Thursday, which means the incomparable Reaper Live with Ed Pugh and various other people. Like Ron. Does Ron still do this one? Yes. And then Mr. Lovejoy will be back to tell the full harrowing story of his yes. car accident. You don't want to miss it. Uh, and then, yeah, and then, of course, we do uh, Tuesday through Thursday at 11 a.m. Central USA time. We do uh, Toolbox Pro Tips with yours truly. Um, and on Wednesday at 3, we do uh, Toolbox Just Regular, where I paint the dragon that never ends. Because um, I'm not using an airbrush. See, this is this. That's why I'm here, guys, so I can learn to paint the dragon faster. Um, and then Terrain Tuesday with Ed at 3 p.m. Central. And I think, oh, and painting platinum with Sadie, who actually showed up this morning to take my slot, so that we could do this whole wiggle around thing. Um, and Sadie is painting the Learn to Paint kits, so that's a great. If you are just starting out, it's a great show, and it's also just a great relaxed chat space. So, I think that's pretty much it. Oh, special news from Ed. I'm supposed to show you guys the shiny dice because we finally got them in more than one color. So these are actually blue and purple with gold letters and they're pretty snastastic. So I'm sure Ed will talk more about this tonight, but there's my little blurb for you. You're okay, rings. Don't worry about being late. Do that wiggle around thing. <laughs> Uh-oh, now people who have soft lips are speaking up. There's going to be a soft lips competition at ReaperCon this year. Am I going to start a kick kissing booth? <laughs> yeah, ooh, let's uh, go to the ReaperCon kissing booth. No, don't oh, listen, Adrian. Don't get that idea. Hey, who's calling me? Oh, you probably uh, want to mute that. Probably want to mute that. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of show is this? <laughs> Who invited this guy? Okay. <laughs> all right, all right, we're set, we're set. All right, show all them right. the awesome uh, Reaper branded. Ooh. Real quick, before we get started. So we have to go over the giveaway stuff. Okay. Because this is kind of special. Aaron did something really awesome. Oh, Aaron um, gets special. So we have a... <laughs> yeah. We have a smaller giveaway, which is a set of the paints that he's using there for the dragon um, that we are we have here. We're going to give that away to however, however many people per subs. But if we end up getting to 20 subs today, Aaron is going to do what? I am going to do a special dance. No. Um, <laughs> I'm offering up a one-hour free private coaching with me. So if you want to level up on your airbrushing or something, um, that would be a great time to do it. Or so, you just want to talk to me about the crash. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So one lucky person will get an hour airbrush class or, uh, you know, a therapy session. Yeah. Or, and or, we do, I do that online um, via, like, Google Hangouts or something. So it's pretty cool. I mean, I have a lot of, I do a lot of private coachings every month. And, and so I thought we'd throw one in um, for one lucky Reaper fan because I love Reaper fans. Yay. So, Our Reaper, Reaper fans are pretty awesome. And that is Reapers. at 
Peeper Reapers. Yeah, right. Peeper Reapers. Uh, that is at 20 subs. But every five subs, yes, ignore the everyone today. We're going to have a uh, compressor. Yes, a compressor going on in the background. Let's, let's just ignore it. Um, but at 20 subs, he'll be giving that away. But every five subs after that, or even before that, every five subs, we're going to give away a set of the paint he's using. Sweet. So. Yeah. Um, that means get your resubs in, get your bits in, get everything in today, guys. Yeah, toss everything in, like all all the subs. That would be Thunderhawk. That's an air compressor. Welcome to airbrushing. <laughs> One on one. <laughs> it is already Robin. It is already driving Justin crazy. It was driving him crazy before we even started the stream. Fact. <laughs> good times. Good times. This show, Valandar. This is this is for this special show, or is it first night too, uh, Justin? For the special. Uh, for the specials, just for tonight, because we just always give tonight. away stuff on Reaper Live. This oh, all right. is, yeah. This is just for the show, guys. Look at that. So Reaper's yeah. my oh. addiction for the first one. All right. Yay. Thanks for the sub. All right. Cool. Well, let's, uh, let's get to it, Aaron. Like, you want to show us the brand new Reaper airbrush that we've been sure. hearing so much about, I'd and then show us to. how to use it. All right. I'll go ahead and cut to this camera then, Aaron, if you're Sweet. ready. Cut to this camera. All right, dun, dun, dun. I mean, see it. Ooh, there's the shiny Reaper logo. The little Reaper logo. Oh, it's in gold on And black. actually, this is still like pre-production a little bit. And the Vex logo that's up here. So this is the Reaper Vex. Um, it will actually be thicker lettering like this. So, but on this side. So only difference there. Um, some other cool features. Uh, we have a reversible uh, nozzle cover. So for those of you not real confident in keeping your needle from getting bent. You can turn this nozzle cover around, put it back on somehow. <laughs> <laughs> and boom, now we have a nozzle cover on there. So you ding it, you're okay. That would be for um, me. I don't do that though, so I'm gonna put it back the other way because I like seeing my needle. Uh, anyways, um, this is a really uh, cool project that I've been working on with Badger Airbrushes um, for almost a year now. Uh, myself and another painter named Matthew Fontaine have been giving input as far as like, um, You're muted, by the way. Go ahead. as far as like, uh, you know, the specs that we oh, want on this, and so that's what we're gonna do. Um, oh, I didn't know so that. Let's get started on doing a little bit of the air brush. So I'm gonna use some of this Steinerez, uh, Steinerez primer. I'll see it later. And. The really cool thing about this airbrush is you can actually spray Ooh, primer, regular paint, and inks. So it's kind of like a detail brush and a general purpose airbrush. No, no, it's back, guys. The uh, This is uh, kind of a... Ron's trying to get a secret message. Ron is trying to, to, like, come in and, and stick his yeah. suit in and, like, say stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Did yeah. you know that? Yes, we okay. do. Also, okay. I, I just didn't know... We're Silly here. Ron. I'm gonna show you how inspired we are. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna airbrush that dice? Yeah. <laughs> so I just want a purple and blue dragon. <laughs> That's all I want. So yes. So, so green and yellow? Is that how Yeah, works? green and yellow. Yeah. Um, right. <laughs> are we live again? Yeah, yeah you're back off. Okay. Are we, we never, back on? We never weren't live. Oh, okay. We're never still weren't live. live. All right, yeah, Ron had to stick himself in and inform us that the <laughs> dice were the inspiration for the dragon. We don't know what's going ah, on. What is the needle size of the airbrush? I don't know. <laughs> it's the proper size. Um, no, so here's here's the deal. This is a this is a hybrid airbrush. So it not only sprays general purpose, so like a needle size between four and five, but it also sprays detail. So a needle size like two. How does it do that? I don't know. Um, uh, when when we were working with Badger to develop the airbrush. Uh, I, I told them that I really liked their Patriot 105 and I really liked their Sotar 2020. Mm -hmm. And I, if he couldn't make something that, that copied both of those, then I wasn't really interested because I already had good airbrushes. Right. And he nailed it. Like, All right. I haven't touched another airbrush since I got the first samples about a year ago. Wow. Um, so the really cool thing about this is this airbrush is going to come with the, with the regular needle, which does detail and general purpose airbrushing. Um, so. For you newbies out there, general purpose airbrush is what you want to learn on because it doesn't clog. Um, a detail airbrush is what you don't want to learn on because it will clog like crazy. Ooh, and okay. and you've airbrushed a little bit. You know that Tiny th bit, they just yeah. clog anyway. So uh, Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Airbrushes hate acrylic paint. 
and acrylic paint hates airbrushes. Yes, very. So you want you. the biggest needle possible, okay. especially for what we're doing. So, um, so what makes this special is we've mm -hmm. got both airbrushes in one. So Ooh. you only have to buy one airbrush. And you get both needly things. Right? Yes. Yeah. Now the cool thing is, is um, in the development process, we realized that some people might want even higher detail. Mm -hmm. um, so we put in an extra needle to the to the product for the super fine. Yeah, for like super super fine. Awesome. Like people that want to, I don't know. Do crazy things. Yes. With twenty eight millimeters. Atoms or something. I don't know. Eight um, <laughs> <Paint> atoms. <laughs> But the cool thing is normally in an airbrush, you have to change the nozzle and everything. In this airbrush, you don't. Okay. The nozzle works universally for Weird. any of the needles that go to this airbrush. So oh. it just makes it really nice. You don't have to worry about lugging different nozzles around with you oh. or having the wrong nozzle in your airbrush with the wrong needle. You just swap the needle and the nozzle the needle, is universal. Done. And yes. that's fantastic. It is. It's super fantastic. Wow. So, um, oops, I guess I should push the needle in. <laughs> so, you know, uh, pro tip. <laughs> yeah. Dr. Bob actually had some questions. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, they said, how much ventilation do you need to use it safely? Can you do it in a closed room, which we're doing now? Um, do you need a hood? Does the paint drift around like spray paint will? Um, so it depends. When you're first starting, I would say that the paint's going to be all over the place. Um, there will be dust, um, which is not wet paint. It's dry paint just floating around. Um, on Amazon, you can get like a little uh, vacuum chamber type thing that like is an airbrushing hood uh, and that will work. Um, for what I do though, um, I don't spray tons of paint. I spray very precise amounts of paint in the spaces that I want. So I don't, I have, I haven't found, like I don't use a hood um, in my room. I, mm -hmm. I airbrush in my bedroom. <laughs> You're a bad man. Even yeah. I have a tiny little hood for my table. Uh, not really necessary, though, huh? Not, when you're just doing spritz if, spritz. If I'm doing a bunch of primering and stuff, okay. maybe I will, like, I'll take it outside. Or we go to the local game store oh, and okay. let them deal with it. And just, um, <laughs> here, let's pollute the game right. store. Right. But typically, um, unless you're just going crazy and spraying all over the place, um, you shouldn't have paint just flying up in the air. Um, I use a puddle pad below me, and that catches a lot. It what is it? A puddle pad is yeah. where your pads on like one of those oh i see a puppy pad a puppy pad yeah oh good they a have puppy people pad. pads too like i've been working on that with liz i'm like hey we need to <laughs> i want to poop in the, in the bed um, <laughs> no. probably not the, no she's not super not happy with that oh but, my god um no. but it's possible right Piddle so pad. so yeah. yeah um as far as like respirator and stuff um when i'm doing my videos it's really hard to like just be like respirated out and talk so oh, yeah. i don't use one yeah. then but i would get look at like do a google search and just ask for uh you know uh airbrush respirators and like 3m has them they're like 20 between 25 50 bucks something like that um there's some cooler ones online like mm. i found a bane one that, uh, like, I, that's the one i, I have a cool get, one actually yeah. i've got all the gear i just don't ever use it it's the right. sad <laughs> sad truth of being a miniature painter right it's the like house with that's it. sexy i just want it yeah your dog's it was, uh, like, what? i can't remember it was the one that um that greg was using greg uh, uh yeah Zuniga. yeah i'm not i don't know which one he's awesome i don't pay attention to people's masks <laughs> his was too cool for me not to pay attention but yeah, so so there is some overspray. When I lived in one apartment when I was first mm -hmm. learning, and when I moved out, I realized that the kitchen, because that's where I had airbrushed, was in the kitchen, because I don't know why. Mm -hmm. um, it was tinted More a little bit space. red. Right. But when I moved out of my last place, there was nothing. So All I right. think I've learned to control it a little bit better. Mm -hmm. But when you're learning, it might be out of control. So you could do it on your back porch. You could mm -hmm. do it in your garage. Mm -hmm. Like, don't do it next to a white car. Like, that would probably <laughs> be a bad idea. Um, it doesn't smell like um, spray primer. Right, like spray right. primer is pretty stinky. Um, Steinal Res Primer, which is what we're using right here, um, it's a little bit smelly, but most of your paints aren't going to smell that yeah, much. Yeah, they really um, don't. Like, I think our, our stinkiest paint is our liner. It just has a little bit of a, a, a different smell to it because the base is totally different chemically. It smells of stench. <laughs> Quick update. Yeah. So we hit five subs and 200 bits, which means the giveaway is unlocked for the first set of paints. Ooh. Sweet. Um, so get everyone get your hashtag free in if you want to uh, enter. Yeah, Except for you, Aaron, you can't enter. Our um, goal is sorry, 20. Sorry. Remember, I don't our know goal how. is 20 <laughs> so that we can give away a coaching session um, with Aaron here. Yes. If you really want to learn to use your airbrush really well, mm -hmm. let's get up to 20. Yes, 20. 20, guys. Now, and what I would like to do, if you would, I'll cut back to the other camera. Okay. You can show them the paints that you're going to be painting with. Right, okay. Because that's the first giveaway. Mm. Okay, so... 
as in most of my paint jobs, I start with a bunch of paint and then I don't use any of it. <laughs> so we've got, we've got green liner, uh, we've got pale violet red, um, and this is where my crappy eyesight will come in really good. That's okay. We have nightmare black. 9280. Now, which one's that? Is that just straight up black? No, it's actually it a, a, it's a blue black. It's okay. really intensely blue. Perfect. Perfect. Yes. Okay, so we have a deep twilight, which is another blue, like a dark blue. Purpley. So, so well, my idea with this with this paint job, since we're mimicking these dice, um, oh, we forgot the gold. Um, <laughs> so I want to do like dark blue shadows and maybe build up some lighter blues tones in the shadows. Mm -hmm. But then we're gonna go to magenta, magenta yeah. purple. So it's magenta. Clear magenta. Like this is it. If you're gonna get a magenta, this is one of my favorites. Sexiest color. Done on deal. Earth. Done. Done deal. Don't let the word clear fool you. <laughs> My first Reaper kind, I was airbrushing with it. I thought it was a wash. Oh, and, no, no. And I'm no. like, wow, this thing's really opaque. Because <laughs> it is. Relatively speaking. I mean, if you work with it for, with a brush, you're going to see that. Right. It definitely you, you leaves are, brush but I, with strokes, the right? airbrush, with you'll airbrush. find with your airbrush, uh, you'll get opacity quicker. So that's good. Um, we got a black green, uh, worn navy, which is another blue, dragon black, which is, I mean, this is it right here. I always, whenever I come to Reaper, I pick up like 20 bottles. You don't, <laughs> You didn't hear that from me though. Um, and then Warren Navy. Did we already have that? Yeah, I think you did. We did. Yeah, you got two So we're going to use nines. tons of Warren Navy. We'll probably <laughs> just pour some of this on there right now. It's a really nice, sl slightly muted navy blue, guys. If you've never used Warren Navy, it's kind of underestimated, I think. If you want the blue with, but without the eye popping bright intensity, but you still want a fair amount of saturation, it just has a little hit of brown in it. Um, so it's a lot of way. In a lot of ways, it's like um, oil painters used to mute their blues by adding a little bit of a complementary color. In this case, um, orange is a standing, brown is a standing for orange. So there you go. And uh, if you win paint, you're getting one of each of these. So yeah, that's a, that's a nice giveaway. We'll probably isn't drop it? off the extra worn na worn navy. So maybe we'll see. <laughs> they might get two. You get two bottles two of, of worn navy. Indeedy. What? 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 So yeah. So if you win the giveaway, you get paint. You get lots of paint, and it's magenta e. You love the way I talk about paint. Thank you, Eliotter. What dragon are you painting, Aaron? Hold them up. One of them. This one. Ah, chunky dragon. Dun, 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 dun. From Bones 5. That's the right. The shiny fat dragon. A this spiky fat dragon. Actual digital print. Yep. So I'm going to try not to drop it. <laughs> I don't I need to shatter two the dragons. I don't need yeah. to break two dragons in one week. Like, oh, that would be bad. I've hit my quota. <laughs> oh, goodness. So, yes, this is it. When is the airbrush available for retail? I think we're not sure, but things are definitely progressing, Josh and, Josh and Min. Yeah, they're in the process, and I think that will be discussed a little bit more tonight. Oh, right. Yeah, that's so, a good Ed question. That's yeah. a good Ed question. He's the man. He has the control. We'll have to do gold with the uh, with uh, detailing, I'm afraid. We'll have to do it with an actual brush, Reaper is my addiction. Wow, Malin with the 1,000 bits. Thank you, Malin. Woo, nice. That puts us at 10 subs, by the way. We're halfway to the Aaron goal. And two sets of painter there. All right, all right. Yeah. Volander the Red. He is the Dragon Slayer. <laughs> <laughs> Josie, um, this print is a 3D print. I don't think we've got an actual resin printer, do we, Just Do we? Uh... Uh, I don't think so. I think so. We've, this is just a straight-up 3D print on this one. We do sometimes send them out to be turned into resin, but this is an actual print, Josie. Now, is this the actual size of it? Is it going to be, or do we know? What? Maybe? Ed question. I think Ron's, I think Ron's so? in chat. Ron's oh, hey, Ron. That. Reaper Ron or Reaper John. Any of you Reaper peeps? Oh, yeah, Shavinra. That, yeah, this is the female dragon. Oh, I asked yeah. for a girl dragon. Oh, so it's so good sweet. that you're painting her with purples. Because, you know, girl dragons love purples just like ants do. Oh, I think girl <laughs> dragons love black dragons. <laughs> <laughs> That's oh, not nearly as exciting, though. Yes, yes. We need, to, we need to bump some color here. Uh, so. Malin, we're having a giveaway of all the paints Aaron is using for every five subs. And at 20 subs, we are giving away a lesson with him, this guy, for an hour, a one-hour coaching session on airbrushing or painting, whatever you want. He's a pro at all of it. So, All right. Doo -doo. All right. Then uh, you ready to get started there, Ed? Yeah, I'm all ready. All right. I'll ready try to, to field questions while you're setting stuff Ready to stuff rock up. and roll. Uh, <laughs> Clever crow. Michael Proctor says, start airbrushing already, you slacker. <laughs> okay, so here's the first rule I always tell people when airbrushing, and it's just a simple for color selection. Um, I don't care what colors you choose, but try to pick colors that are in bottles. Luckily, Anne has produced a bazillion colors. 
Great idea. You know, I, I hear a lot of people are like, why don't they just do the artist colors and we mix them all? But the problem is when you're air, trying to airbrush something or say you're doing an army or you want to do three of these dragons and they're all kind of similar, um, how do you remember what paints you mixed? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. so I just say pull the paint straight out of the bottle, find colors you like and let the airbrush do all the mixing for you. Right. So it's a little bit easier to match later on and you're good to go. Um, so that's the first Mini Painting Studio, um, it comes with several needles. It actually has a... Uh, it has the standard one. Yeah, it has a standard one, and then it has a, a more detailed one, like in the, what is the, the one, the 2020? What's that name of their uh, other like airbrush? A, uh, Sotar 2020. Yeah, the Sotar 2020. And then he said it also is going to come with a really fine micro needle. Yeah. And so so the, the original needle covers both a general purpose, which would be like, uh, say, a Patriot 105 or a size four needle and then but it also does the job of a size two needle so it's two needles in one it's one needle but two things two functions yeah. who I'm knows already, how they did I'm it i'm already it's, confusing it, myself it's black magic we don't yeah. know how badger did it but apparently that's how they did it yeah oh yeah my little painting big yeah so thanks for painting bigging uh guys they get they made my little dragon head into an emote because trash uh, trash arama is so cool all right. So yay! So I go. haven't I haven't tested this airbrush yet. It was just involved in a really horrible car crash. So let's hope Ooh. it actually works. <laughs> Malin Ooh. just threw tier one subs all over the world. All right. Well, that's the goal. There it is. Now Aaron's on the hook to actually teach somebody something. Wait, yep. what? <laughs> so now we're giving away four sets of paint, and then a fifth person is going to get oh, the paint yeah. and a lesson with uh, Aaron. So as you can see, so when I airbrush, most people airbrush at, you know, uh, I don't know, 20 PSI, mm -hmm. between 10 and 20 PSI. Uh -huh. I airbrush at 40. Oh, interesting. So um, I don't recommend, well, no, I do recommend that. If you've never airbrushed before, just go straight to 40 and hmm. you'll never know the difference. Interesting. Um, it's a little out of control at first, especially if you're used to lower pressures. But what it does is it atomizes the paint better and mm. you be get better coverage. Uh, the atomization of the paint makes the dots that are sprayed out of it smaller, oh, as small as they can possibly be. I see. So you get so a finer, a, a finer, finer gradient. Green, yeah, yeah, basically. So, um, also, just for those of you out there, don't. I always tell this in my airbrushing classes. This airbrush does not replace your paintbrush. So this airbrush is a tool to to get colors on very quickly, and then you use your paintbrush to do all the magic. So, take that to heart. <laughs> So I should have Aaron uh, base put this dragon, and then I should put yeah, and then you should paint it. it. Yeah, you paint right on <laughs> but top. But I'm of already it. painting a dragon that never ends. <laughs> so Aaron, is it is it possible to have an airbrush that's just so well rounded that it does replace your paintbrush? Is that I don't, possible? I don't know because you'd have to get pretty fine details. I mean, the, the details fine. that we put on a model. You could never really, do it. You really could never fine. do what I did on I think Soldier it would, 76. No, I never. think it would be. But but the airbrush. As far as like uh, your general lighting, uh, so I use my airbrush for general lighting, getting my light placement. So if I have like, you know, strong light from the side or say OSL coming mm -hmm. up from below, I can get that started with my airbrush and then I switch to my paintbrush. But it's, it's a continuous switch back and forth. Right. So as I need the airbrush for certain things like glazing or something, I will use the airbrush as opposed to my paintbrush because one, it's quicker. And two, I, get a, I, I can control it much better. So right. if I need to change a, a tone by say 5%, mm -hmm. that's very hard to do with your paintbrush. Yes. Like you're like watering down and hoping that, you know, maybe after three coats you got to 5%. Right, it's glazing. But yep. you don't know, you yeah. know. And so with my airbrush, I can be very precise with that and then come back in with my paintbrush, push my highlights a little further, push the shadow a little further. Mm -hmm. um, I love it because I can do everything. Like right. I, I have the fun of painting with my, with my hands, um, but I also have the speed up of getting all the stupid stuff out of the way. Yeah, getting you know? the base coat, the boring yeah. base coat out the of the way. The boring base coats. You get past that fugly stage really quickly and mm -hmm. you can move right into, because I think most people, they kind of give up the ghost like in the middle of a paint job because they've been in that fugly stage for so long. Mm -hmm. And this just kills it, Yeah, you know? The ugly so. stick stage is much less, much less uh, pre prevalent, yes. So when I'm spraying on all the primer and stuff, I'm going from all different angles. Um, one of the ways, if you're new to airbrushing, if you want to practice, like practice, um, the primer stage is the perfect place to practice because you can't mess up. Mm -hmm. It's all going to be black. Right. So I can come in and go, hey, what would it look like right here if there was a little bit of shadow, say in the back of this uh, 
the horn here. So I can just start spraying it in a little bit. Oops, let me do a hard spray there. And I can see if I can actually hit that area with color without mm. masking anything off or anything. Right. I can also see what it looks like with shadows in before the actual paint job. So I can go, how dark can I go before it's like maybe too dark? It just right? looks too weird, yeah. Yeah, so I can just come back in, hit a little bit more, maybe up here. Yeah. Maybe I pull back a little bit and I spray real lightly and I get just a lighter tone up on the top. Mm -hmm. So I can actually practice on the model before I actually paint it. Nice. And I'm practicing airbrushing, so I'm practicing my control. Right. Because later on, if I come in with an ink and it's all done, uh -huh. it's very scary to go in and go, I'm going to just dot this eye right here. Uh -huh. So um, great, great way to practice. Otherwise, you're just blasting paint on as quickly as possible. So... In hindsight, thinking back, I probably should have primed half of this before the show so <laughs> we could blow through this, but maybe I'll just prime the front of it, the, yeah. the head. Head and neck and just do it that yeah. way, yeah. Head, neck, and belly. It's new massage therapy. <laughs> Massaging the dragon with the airbrush. Yeah. Now, one cool thing that I was talking about with Ed and Ron was maybe doing a, a little video series with a couple of the painters, you know, like maybe Proctor and, mm -hmm. and uh, Rhonda Bender or something, mm -hmm. and uh, or maybe even you. you oh, you're, me? You're kind of a newbie to airbrushing. <laughs> yeah, um, I am. I am. Uh, and just kind of like going over the basics and stuff that would be kind of fun. So, yes. so kind of stay tuned yeah. for that, too, maybe in the future. Um, be for fun. all of you that are a little bit scared of airbrushing. Yeah, because I'm like totally, my thing with airbrushing, I am a little bit shy on it just because I'm certain I'm going to kill the needle because it's so fragile. Um, but otherwise, for me, it's like how easy is it to set up and break down because I'm always like, I could just glaze this faster and I can set up an airbrush and yes. do it, you know, like kind of things. But then I'm, that's it's, because it's I'm like, so used to a brush. Yeah, it's like wet blending. There's certain things. Yeah. So that's what I think really the, the beauty of, or once you start learning your airbrush and the spots to use it, mm -hmm. I mean, you're like, this is an airbrush area. This is wet blending. This is, right. you know, layering, whatever you need to do. And so once you get that, it's like very easy to switch back and forth between. Right. Between do you tend to do, you um, just because of setup and breakdown, do you tend to like work on like, okay, I'm going to airbrush a whole bunch of models this morning and then I'm going to switch to brush in the afternoon? Do yeah, so, so I'm a commission painter, so I do this for a living and, and yeah, like there'll be, sometimes it's an airbrush day. Yeah, you know? right. So just when I'm like going crazy and going, I never want to paint another eyeball again. <laughs> yes. You know, I can switch to airbrushing. It's like a different job. It's, it's a different yeah. skill set. And so I'll do that. But yeah, there's, there's, uh, when I'm doing like single figs, usually the airbrush and the paintbrush kind of go back and forth together. Interesting. So. Okay. Now, granted, I have the, I'm not scared to paint, to airbrush over my painting. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's another thing. Like if you're practiced with your priming, you start getting more, you're like, okay, I'm more confident in now doing an area where I've done a whole lot of detail work and I just need to tint it a little bit different mm -hmm. color, that's really scary mm -hmm. if you don't know what you're doing. Right. But, you know, just practice, basically. All right. So we're getting this in here. Yeah, for those adding and mentioning that it looks like the Sotar uh, and Chrome had a baby and it looks like the Sotar 2020, this is kind of a combo of the Patriot and the Sotar 2020. Patriot yeah. 105 and the Sotar 2020. So yes. <laughs> Thank you, Treasurama. I'm sorry that you can't just throw money at the TV to, and have an airbrush pop out. And yes, Dr. Bob, I am here with Aaron because I am a complete noob. Like, Michael Proctor very generously gave me a lesson, like, three years ago on how to basically use my airbrush, and I mostly remember it, but that's, like, all I know, and I haven't really used it since, so I can ask all the dumb questions. <laughs> so how do you prevent, like, destroying needles, Aaron? Like, because that's my biggest fear, because I look at how fine that sucker is, right. and I'm like, oh my god, I'm going to eat this. Like, I'm going to just bury it in a table or something. Like, right. what happens? Um, don't destroy it. <laughs> don't destroy it. Um, <laughs> and just don't. That's yeah. the answer. <laughs> so, uh, on our compressor, which you can't see here, there's a, little, there's a little holder for your airbrush. But a lot of times, people ding their needle by when you're putting it in the holder, there's two little slots, and they mm. get the slot with the needle. 
-hmm. So maybe just slowing down a little bit and being okay. careful. Just being very um, mindful of the yeah, needle. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Respect your needle, everybody. Right, respect your needle. All right, so I think we got some black on here. <clears throat> And I'm going to start, uh, I'm going to switch out this color. You never throw away Steinol Res primer. That's a no-no. Pour it back in. And I'm going to wash out my cup. So this is exactly how I do it at home. I got a cup. This is the cool new Pizza Dungeon cup from ReaperCon next year. Uh -huh. Or this year. This, Whatever. This, year? this coming year, yeah. I don't know. Whatever the next Reapercon is, I yeah, got one sure. of the new cups. I think this was, yeah, this was, uh, I don't know it has if Bones I was 5 on it. I supposed to use so. it for this, but oh well. Um, maybe I'm supposed to drink out of it. That's right. So you can I use just, it for whatever you want. I spray in the cup, I let it fall out till like there's water, like clear water. So that's straight up water, it doesn't have uh, any ice purple in it? It's isopropyl alcohol and distilled water. So 10% okay, so like, isopropyl, 90% mm -hmm. okay. water. 90% distilled water. Yeah. And um, and I use this to thin my paints. I also use it to clean my. How important brush. is distilled? I don't know because I just stopped using it. I just use the water out of the faucet. It probably if it's like mini painting, then using distilled water is is important if you are in like an urban area or an area with old pipes. Like uh, in New York City, Bobby Wong always told me that he he definitely used distilled water because right. the pipes were so old in Spanish Harlem that, that he thought there was a lot of heavy metals and stuff in there and that can affect Yeah, it will, the inside of your airbrush is brass. So yeah. it will start, their stuff will start growing, but I've right. never noticed it growing, so I'm, whatever. Yeah, if you've got really hard water, that also might be the case, Silverthorn. So, you know, if you want to be on the safe side, sure, go ahead, use distilled. I mean, it's cheap, right? You can get a whole gallon for 99 cents. Oh yeah. You could probably use it blood wild, but I mean, I wouldn't, if you used it consistently over years, your airbrush might uh, get some deposits and stuff building up. Hey, Ann, huh? you know what's hilarious about what you just said about old Harlem, though? Is Spanish dis Harlem. There's Spanish Harlem, yeah. sorry. Um, is distilled water actually eats up old pipes. Really? Pipes. It does. Interesting. Because it's without minerals. So what so it does is it, uh, it, it leaches it, it out. Yeah. Leaches it out. Yeah. Exactly. So actually actively using distilled water would make the pipes break down. Interesting. That's why it's not used in city water treatment. That's interesting. Yeah. yeah. I mean, not like they should run distilled water through their pipes, but just they yes. have a lot of very old metal pipes. It, and so, yeah, yeah. It's another reason why it's not suggested that you drink it all of the time. Oh, no, carry. you shouldn't. Yeah, it leaches minerals out of you. Bingo. Yep. So. What strength is the isopropyl? I think... 91. 91%. Okay, I just discovered something with this airbrush. The yes. needle that I had in it was the fine detail one. Uh huh. And now I just put in the regular one. Yeah. And, it, and even more paint comes out, so... Lots of paint. Yeah. Lots so of paint. that's really cool. You see it goes on even faster. But I can still get in and hit real small areas. Just, just with a little bit of paint if yep. I need to. There you so, go. so it's just pressure control at that point. Right, 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 right. So this is this is the larger needle that, that is like a Patriot 105 Sotar combo. Mm -hmm. The other needle that I just had in was the fine detail one. Yeah. So it was spraying a little bit slower. Anyways. Wow. I was wondering. Yeah, you were like, wait, this isn't working as fast is, as it this should. This is going super slow, but. That's and crazy. And I'm so super hard. impatient. <laughs> crazy. Thanks we for the raid. raid. Yes. We have a raid party. Hey, MP Services, thanks for raiding us. This is a great time to raid us. We're doing an airbrush lesson with Aaron Lovejoy. Also, Aaron, uh, anytime you got to like mess with your airbrush, if you could move forward a little bit so we okay. can see everything. Yeah. Just just a hair. Because Achilles wanted to see what you were doing, but I think oh, you were on okay. screen. Um, all I did was pull the needle out and put the new needle in. Okay. Well, that's, that's, that's what he did, Achilles. Job. So what I usually do, I run, I run some water in the cup, I spray it out till all the water is gone. And unless I'm going from say white to red or colors that really, really will impregnate the other color, right? I just leave it. Right. You just you don't, just do the basic rinse and then yeah, you go to the next don't color. Don't touch the inside of your cup because the more you start doing this and taking a brush and cleaning it out, I know how you want to be super clean. It doesn't work here. So um, if you've been airbrushing for a while, see I primed that whole dragon. 
um, there will be dried up paint on the inside of my cup. Uh, and what that does is it aggravates it and it you get sit, there's sheets of paint. Oh yeah. And it'll go to the bottom and never comes out. And the first place it goes is inside your nozzle and now you're clogged. So Oh wow. Okay. So do not use a brush to try to clean out your right. cup of Don't your worry about it. You know, do not, if you no do need to clean it all the way cleaning. out, take everything apart and clean it right. that way. Right. Yeah, proper clean it or quick clean it, nothing in between. Right. So Achilles Blade is convinced that you went off screen to wave your magic wand over it, and that's I, actually what I, you did. Yeah, I did. I think that's probable. I mean, I wasn't watching him, but he's pretty good at sleight of hand of that. I, I am. So we're going to start, normally when I'm airbrushing, I will do, I'm going to do it a couple different ways. So we could do a Zenithal Prime with white, mm -hmm. um, which... But we do we have, have some white. white. Okay. okay, cool. Um, <laughs> yeah, he's like, wait, where is my white? We don't have white, so we're not going to do that. <laughs> um, but I just wanted to kind of show how the paints uh, build up mm -hmm. um, without white underneath them. So mm -hmm. the airbrush, one thing about the airbrush is it's really nice. Um, you can build up colors very quickly um, this way instead of, unlike like layering by hand. Yes, and get um, better opacity apparently. Yeah. Apparently my um, clear magenta isn't clear after all, and I misnamed it. <laughs> No, it's clear. It's just, I don't know what clear means. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm getting my case up here. Clear in this case was the warning uh, that, hey guys, this may not cover awesomely. Right, Because it's right. super bright and the pigment grind is fine. We'll, uh, we'll watch Aaron dig through his, his We'll yeah, watch Aaron dig through his By the way, his uh, unicorns. I like oh, the yeah, unicorns. I would like to point out, his uh, airbrush pack there is really cool or with the paints and the... Uh, yeah, it's got patches some... and... Yep. Super. Oh, of course I don't have what I thought I had in there. Uh, Dr. Bob, no, not actively because we we're kind of far away from our our overarching sub goal. When we get a little closer, I'll I'll reactivate it. And we have an overarching sub goal. We do a fifteen hundred. In fact, if we do, then we give away big stuff big each month. Stuff. But we're really Ooh. far away from it. So is that a monthly or an annually or? A uh, it was gonna. Yeah. It, well, not gonna. It is monthly, but we just mm. haven't done it. Right. Right. So. All right. You ready, Ed? All right, we're ready. Let's rock and roll. I didn't have my little squirter bottle, uh -huh. so I'm going to use my big squirter bottle and hope for the best. Ooh. So um, I'm using my 10% isopropyl alcohol, 90% distilled water in a, in a little squeezy bottle here. Normally, I put it in an empty reaper dropper bottle, mm. and then that way I can just do drop, 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 and you I can control my water. should have said something. I have, a, I, have a one I have one downstairs. I have a <sighs> bottle of water downstairs. Oh, well. Oh, well. Just be so, very careful. So, yes. So, I try to do, as you know, every color is different, right? Mm -hmm. So, you yep. have thinner mixes and thicker mix mixes. So, I can't tell you that 45% water to... Right. There are no mixture. ratios. You There's no see, ratio. Figure out the way it looks. Right, 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 right. So, what I do is I try to do, guess at about 30%. So, which, what is that? Who knows? <laughs> Four or five drops. That's like I mean, two to one. Yeah. So I'm going to spray a little in there. I probably sprayed too much. That's why I usually don't use this type of dropper bottle. But what I'm doing is my test will be, and well, you probably can't see opaque, this, so. but um, I try to make it so when I press on the brush, the paint pushes up through. Uh -huh. And then when I take away, the paint goes back through. I see. So I want to get to so just... Normally, when it comes out of the bottle, it just stays on top, and it won't right. freely go through the bristles. As uh -huh. soon as it starts freely going through the bristles, it's ready to go. Interesting. And are you using, that's a Taclon brush? Yeah, yeah, yeah just a crappy just old a flat, brush. Just a flat, flat yeah. uh, yeah. Taclon. All right. Sometimes it's a little bit easier if the brush is a little dirty. Because <laughs> <laughs> you can actually see the bristles going through. Now, if yep. you over thin it, the, it will go through the bristles too. So, you know, you want to kind of slowly add your mixture until the paint mm -hmm. starts freely mm -hmm. going through. Some paints are ready to go right out of the bottle, mm -hmm. like some yellows and stuff, but you usually have to put at least a couple drops in. So, um, all right, so let's see if this works. If it's too thick, you'll know because nothing will come out of your airbrush. And that's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Ah. There's uh -oh. What'd you there. do? What'd you do? I don't know. Oh, probably Kiri. See, it's my dog, guys. Yeah, there we go. It's always Kiri. If there's fur around here, chances are it came from her. All right. She just bestows a whole bunch on me. Interesting how you do that, using your brush to transfer it. Oh, yeah. Okay, so I'll probably harp on that a little bit. Yes, you should. Um, in the past, I would just um, pour it in. Does Reaper Flow Improver do the same thing? Uh, Dr. Bob, you could use it in, in the same like manner as water um, with our Flow Improver, but it has a, I mean, it's uh, what's Aaron's dealing with is, uh, is just like capillary action of paint being pulled through the bristles or not as uh, he you know, presses it against the thing. So water, Flow Improver, nothing thick though. Hey, Trash, I've made that joke over the years so many times, it's unreal. Hmm? Uh, the f Flow Improver. Oh, yeah. 
then it makes you rap better. <laughs> Improves oh, your flow. Yeah. Spoon, my dog does not paint minis, but she bestows fur upon me to drag up here for when I stream, and then it bestows itself on other people. Yes. And there are uh, implements of uh, painting. Yes, thanks for the uh, thanks for the raid AMP services. And he says, hope the paint session goes well, Mr. Lovejoy. <laughs> Super happy to see you painting, bud. Have an awesome yeah. stream. There are no giant green vans yeah. upstairs, so I'm <laughs> safe. For now, I'm safe. Yes, my dog is helping, absolutely. All right. I think we're good. I think we've got it. You ready to go? Yeah, let's rock it. All right. Okay, so the reason I do the brush transfer yep. um, is because... Over time, I just realized I didn't clog as much when I brush transferred. Huh. So my guess is that either tiny flecks of paint, it doesn't take a lot to clog right. your airbrush. Right. So um, tiny flecks of paint, even in brand new paint, mm -hmm. um, will clog your airbrush. And I think either they get stuck on the brush or um, sometimes when I'm putting the paint in the cup with the brush, I'll actually see... Because we don't all just start with brand new paint. Like, right. I mean, I right. got paints that are four years old that I'm right. like, oh, I need that color. And you're like, and it's got mixing gunk it. on them. Yeah, you're not going to go and yeah. buy a brand new one. Right. So this is my way of just visually checking a little bit. I mean, obviously, you can't see everything. Right. But, but as you put it in there, you right. can kind of see if you got a glob and I just and noticed pull it out. I don't clog as much. So I'm like, I just, you know, in my line of work, if I'm in the bathroom cleaning my airbrush, yeah. I'm not making any money. You right. Know? Like, right. <laughs> I don't tell my customers, I'm like, okay, so it's going to cost this many hours and there's going to be four hours that I'm cleaning my airbrush. I'm going to have to that so yeah. okay so i spray a little bit on the on my paper i hate when i'm in the uh, bathroom playing with my airbrush yeah that is, the <laughs> is worst that what you call ever. it these days so when i airbrush um this is 100 percent. yeah and if you in this it's not thinned enough it's oh, like 10 percent. oh that's where i live so when I'm airbrushing, I'll do these little 10% sprays. And when I do my classes, I actually give out a chart and I have everyone put like five 10% sprays in a row. Ah. And then you come back and you have to hit the same dot again oh. and make it 20%, 30%, 40%, 50%. That's clever. So, so now you have control. Mm -hmm. And I, I kind of learned this because when I do private coachings on, on my miniature monthly thing, um, I would do... Photoshop paint overs. Mm. And if you just spray, it's like using an airbrush, but I'm painting on someone else's picture. Mm -hmm. And so I'd, I'd spray, and if I had it at 75 or 100%, it would obliterate the picture and they couldn't see what was happening. So I'd always dial it back to 10. Uh -huh. And I remember thinking, this works really good on Photoshop paint overs. What if you could do this in real life? And I'm mm -hmm. like, well, I've got an airbrush and uh -huh. I was using the airbrush tool. Why don't I try it? And so yeah. that's what I did. I didn't want to thin my paint to 10% mm -hmm. because now I have 10% pigment. Right. You and just want to spray like with very little pressure. Exactly. So my, my thing is this, this worn navy mm -hmm. out of the pot is at 100% of what it's capable of mm -hmm. ever. Mm -hmm. it can't be any better than this. Right. So what do we do? We thin it. 80% with water. Yeah. Now we're at 20% again and we're like, okay, it's going to take forever to build that up. So with me raising my air pressure to be able to spray thicker paint and make the dots finer, I can actually build up color really fast. Mm, interesting. And if I needed to make minute changes to things, I can do it. Yeah. With so just I can, one spray. I have, so I have infinite numbers of colors of worn navy. Uh -huh. Over black, it will be... 30 different shades. Right. If I'm, if I. You're building it up. Yeah, if right. I build it up right. So when I'm doing my, um, my, uh, what's this called? A base coat? My yes. shadows. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what we're doing. So even when I'm doing a big model, I'll spray at 10%. So I'll, I'll do these types of sprays. So I'm just slightly getting it in. I'm not doing this. Yeah. I'm right. doing that. So, but this will build up very quickly because I have very thick paint going through my airbrush. Right, right. Interesting. So, this is very interesting. So I can spray it from below like this. And what we're doing here, this is our shadow, and we wanted, we did want blue and purple, right? Yeah, blue, <laughs> I purple, know. I don't know what we're talking about. Yeah. Yes. Blue and purpley magenta. So, so I'm going to build in blue shadows right mm -hmm, now. Now mm -hmm. I could do a dark purple. I could do a contrasting color for this. Mm -hmm. Like if I wanted to do like a, like a warm dark green mm -hmm. or yellow, mm -hmm. but I, that would be weird. So yes, it would be weird. <laughs> and it wouldn't be what Ron asked for. And he'd probably run right over here and he'd, we'd both be fired. I don't yes. even work here. <laughs> So spraying from below, and again, I'm just I'm going a little bits at a time, 
But um, it, the funny thing is you really, can you see that it's kind of changing yeah. a little bit blue? Oh, I can see the blue really, yeah. really strong. So I'm going to do a little bit everywhere, right? Because I need to see how everything looks at the same shade. Right. Then I can go back in and start going, okay, I want, it's, it's probably more light is hitting down here. So I want my blue to be lighter. All right. Even though it's a dark blue. Mm -hmm. So up here I did 10%. Down here maybe I'll do 30%. So it'll right. be a lighter blue at the bottom in my shadows. There we go. So now I've got a couple different shades of blue. And maybe up in the face I'll hit it a little bit more because I want some drama up there. Yeah. The bottoms. I just want to say, chat, great job answering questions from newbies. Thank you very much. That way I don't have to talk over Aaron. That's right. So I'll just do this front part real quick like that. So this is another area that you could practice because it's really dark. I mean, most of this is going to get covered up by our mid-tones and stuff. Right. So uh, just seeing if you can get into certain areas, this is a great precursor to things to come. Right. And so you're practicing. Go out, everybody go out and buy a huge dragon so you can practice your airbrushing. Yeah. Well, if you've done Reaper Bones in the past, you probably <laughs> have like 18 of them. So. <laughs> Now, we these things, this is super easy, well, super easy. This is pretty easy to do on a big dragon. Mm -hmm. um, I would recommend doing larger models or terrain. Yeah, at first. yeah, or terrain, yeah. Um, but fun. you can do all this stuff on a chibi yeah. or, uh, you know, very small miniature. Okay, so that's our blue. I'm going to spray this hey, out. Hey, Bryce. Bryce Coconut in the chat. Bryce! I know several people who wear gloves when they're airbrushing Mazamune, but uh, Aaron lives dangerously. <laughs> you, you know what? Uh, Probably pa another good idea. <laughs> Panache? Panache? Is that how it's pronounced? If we get uh, if we get 20 more subs, I'll add a dragon to all of the giveaways. How about wow. that? Wow. If we add get 20 more subs, Justin is going to add a dragon. Yeah, maybe Trogzul. That's nice and big. That's yeah, that, that's that, that red good. one back there. So... All right. I think you're getting drunk with power, Justin. That's right. I, I was channeling my inner Ed. The next thing we're giving away is Aaron himself. I <laughs> know Liz would have serious issues with that. <laughs> She's like, as long as I get to come too. <laughs> All right, it's a package deal, guys. You heard it here. Hundred subs. They're yours. But but we're gonna have a bidding war if if that happens. I think we need to make sure there are people uh, bidding from different locations so that Aaron and Liz can choose where they go to live in their new home. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's got to be a big house, preferably a dungeon. Somewhere in a fantastic, yeah. on top of a mountain. Right, you know, right. In a beautiful location. Uh, you know what, Trash? Yeah, you know what? 50 more subs and I'll sip, no, the, I'll sip the paint water. Not food grade. I'm non kidding. toxic I'm not, I'm not is not do that. food grade. <laughs> but I'll ship it to you, Trash, if you want it. I will give you this paint water. <laughs> we'll put it in a little baggie. Thank you, Salazar Whiff. There's five more towards the goal. Oh, we need yeah. uh, 15 Woo. more, guys. Yes, don't invoke Liz's wrath, no men's eek. That woman. I bet she has a glare. Oh, she'll, yeah, she'll go downtown Julie Brown on you, like. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't think so. She has to to keep you in line. <laughs> yes, correct. John is right. Bits also work. So if you guys have a ton of bits, you know, that works yep, too. Yep, if you got bits. Okay, so this, uh, this magenta, one of my favorite colors, is super thin. So I recognize that right off the bat, and I hope I didn't put too much water in there. <laughs> Or it will be clear magenta. Yeah, or it will be very clear magenta. It looks pretty opaque in that cup, though. Yeah, right? yeah. It's the nice thing about using those clear plastic cups, guys. You can kind of judge how uh, how see-through it is by seeing... Uh, yeah, on the side. Yeah. So when side. I get to other things, like if I want to do glazing or mm -hmm. bl like blending sprays, yeah. um, I will judge it on the side of the cup and see about how much. But there's there's other ways. I mean, I go really into depth on it on in, on our Patreon, on Miniature Monthly. Um it's a little bit more than just scraping your, your brush on the side. Right. There's, there's ways of telling, but you literally have to do tests at that point. Right. Um, I but do the same that's thing. part of painting. That's what yeah. you do with your brush, with right. your paintbrush. I, that's like, what I use my well palette No for. one just goes, I oh, I put two goes. drops of water in there and start going. Like, nope. You test it, right? Yep. So I think that's it's very important. So we're going to spray. We're going blue, and it's going, bam, magenta. I almost said orange. You almost said that's orange. That's not the right but color. That's okay, but I love those colors. Like okay. Those colors together are fantastic. So here we go. 
Um, also, just for uh, when I took the thing off screen, you notice I took the back off of here. Um, this particular needle, I don't have the actual general purpose needle for this. Okay. Um, and this one wasn't made for a finished airbrush. So okay. the, need, the back of the needle was too long, so I had to take oh. this part oh. off. So, <laughs> the cool thing is this actually, if you're scared and you don't want to pull back too far on your, on your needle, mm -hmm. this actually uh, adjusts how far you can pull back the needle. So right. um, don't normally do that on regular acrylics, but for inks and stuff, it it's, works great. Oh, I see. So we got our, we got our pink, our magenta. And now I will just start putting it on. So there's two ways you can do this. We can mm -hmm. either put a white underbase on, and then we got like banging magenta, uh -huh. or we could just build up magenta. And I want to see how how well how this well magenta builds up, yep. builds up. Sure. because like I said, getting different uh, shades or how I almost said flavors, getting different flavors of color on your model from the same color uh -huh. um, is important, and you can get a lot of different shades. And then if you if you do do that built up over black, and then you switch to white, and then put it over that, you get even more shade. Right. So just like regular painting. Well, yes. Just Thank like you uh, for the gift bomb there, Stackel Stackelheim, Stach Stachelheim, Stackelheim. Um, and then we are I'm now. Curious. I'm curious eight, to see how this covers over black. Because we are it's eight subs away. Me too. Now, normally, if I was doing yellow, I would not do this because we all know that yellow, yellow over black, black turns into turns licorice. Green. Unless you want that color. Yes. It's actually a pretty interesting. It's disgusting. <laughs> I, I'm not even gonna lie. It's nerve. I was gonna try to say it was interesting, but it's, it's really not. <laughs> well, visually, yes. Um, Chemically, at some it's point, interesting. This is where you always pay attention, though, right? Yeah. And one day you're gonna be like, I need a wicked, like, licoricey color. I know how to make it. <laughs> <laughs> I like licorice, Aaron. Oh, yeah. Oh, there we go. So we start yeah, that looks that magenta's coming up even over that black. I'm impressed. So what's funny is probably the white balance and the cameras and stuff is is freaking out right now. And then as soon as we can build up more, it will suddenly pop down. even yeah. more. Yeah. So another thing, I always spray what I call spraying dry. So you see there's a little bit of wet spray on a couple spots, but it's not too much. Mm -hmm. And if you spray real wet, like here down on the bottom, if you spray real wet like that, mm -hmm. um, no matter how much paint you put on there, it will always dry the same color. But like just like in layering with right. regular painting, right. if it dries in between, you build up very quickly. Yes. So my 10% sprays are working for me big time because I'm building up this color really, really fast. Yeah, coffee nerdery beer you can see is using both the uh, paper towel on the base, under the base there, and a box at the back to hold overspray. But he he sprays in a really controlled manner, so he's not getting a lot of overspray to begin with. We also have kind of surrounded him with cardboard and detritus. We've that's, built that's up. That's why the the lighting has <laughs> been after kind the of... crash. I've been surrounded in pillows and stuff. Yes. <laughs> Save me. <laughs> so lighting the area has been fun too. That's why you have a lot of shadows. Yeah, we've got like one spot we can light it from. That's right. So also notice my my airbrush is always at about a 45 degree angle to my model. I'm not spraying down here or below. So what happens is, is I'm building in shadows as I go. Now, can I change that for some reason? Like maybe I can't get under this arm right here. Mm -hmm. um, I would go down below and spray from below, but I would try to spray only in the highlight area. Mm -hmm. So, but normally I always spray from above because it's just like light almost. It only goes in a straight direction. Mm -hmm. So it's a very easy way to build up your colors. So the top of this is starting, yeah. to, starting to build up color. Oh, sorry, I misread that, Mazamuni. We did hit 20 subs. We're working towards the bonus dragon sub thing. Yes, which is, Justin uh, is drunk with power. Yes, drunk with power. And uh, We're eight subs away from the second goal. So. so one other thing I want to show you on the back of this while we have time. Um, so when you get real close to the airbrush, like about mm -hmm. a half inch away, mm -hmm. I mean, you get what's called a focus spray. So the puddle where it puddles. Kind it of, could or? puddle, but I don't spray enough to puddle. Oh, okay. So, so you spray so that. I can 10%. get a really small, ten percent spray, um, and I can build that up to thirty, forty, fifty very quickly. But I get a very focused spray. So say this is on like a, you're doing a night with a big shoulder pad. Uh -huh. You want to build up that strong highlight, but very uh -huh. small. Boom! You can do that. But if I want to pull my airbrush back about four inches, I get what's called a blending spray. Uh -huh. And I can actually spray oh, right. and blend it. in everything. Okay. So right. I'm going to do it at this angle, too, so you can actually see ah, pretty. that pretty. color change like that. So pretty. there's very easy ways of blending in colors and then uh -huh. coming back in and hitting hard. Hey, Ron, who sculpted this dragon? Questron. Questron. Our friends at Questron. Our friends at Questron. 
Uh, I just start bringing up other colors like on the arm here. On that arm, I'm going to do more on the head. So I want the head to be super bright when it's mm -hmm. all said and done. Right. So I'm trying to control like what's interesting and what's not interesting. Right, so by intensity of color. The more you airbrush, the cool thing about the airbrush is I could easily start over from black right now. Yeah. Like I don't like it, done. We've only been Ooh. working for two seconds. Yeah. So it doesn't really matter. So um, it allows me to practice or just play around with color. All right, so we got that. Pretty cool. Yeah. And I'm gonna now Pretty. spray this out and we'll do some white. Corsair, it is not a Sotar 2020, it is the new Reaper Airbrush, which is kind of a hybrid of the Sotar and the Patriot. Um, and needle size currently is, he moved to the bigger needle, so about a four ish. It's, it's between, uh, so this is the one that's between a two and a four. Okay. It does both. Okay. The other needle that I've already lost is probably like a size <laughs> one and a half or something. It's, it's, it's even finer. But that's for those of you who want a really, really fine needle. Right. For me, I, I would only use this one because I can run my inks, my, my regular acrylics, and my um, primers, no All problem. All through it, no yeah. problem. And you can get focused enough where you I can, can get do as really detailed as you need to. detailed areas right, with this by doing very, very close so. and very fine. Hey, so Aaron, what yeah. kind of crazy obscene number of subs would we have to get in order for you to give away that airbrush? He, he, I can't. He only uses it. <laughs> Hundreds and thousands he of He depends subs. on it now. You cannot do it. <laughs> um, well, also, it's the only one in existence. I think right. That's I think the beauty of it. Well, He's I mean, become to depend on it. Like Aaron would stop airbrushing and, and mourn or something yeah. if All something right. happened. So 10,000 subs. <laughs> yeah. There we go. You get Aaron, Liz, and the airbrush. <laughs> He comes with the airbrush. That's how I'll tell you what. If 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 Ron and Ed okay it, so be it, right? I don't want to take away your your happy airbrush though. No, well, no. I've got I've got. I mean, you this have is, backup airbrushes. This I is, know. This but... is my airbrush. It's yes. like <laughs> shiny and gold. Yeah. I like the black one. I like the reaper one. The black one's super sexy. It is. Um. All right. So we're doing white. So normally I just use Steinol Rose White. It is probably the smoothest spraying white. Bryce says I have to have you explain why you are loading the curb with the brush. Loading the who? Loading the curb with the brush. Be coconut. Oh, he was oh. talking about that earlier. He was saying that it, it clogs less. Yeah. Oh, right, right, right. Loading the cup with the brush. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he Learn was talking about spell, that earlier. Learn to spell, Bryce. <laughs> Learn to spell. Maybe just he's... so everyone knows, Bryce is one of my best friends, so... Yeah. We're travel buddies. We get in all kinds of yes. trouble. We've been arrested like more times than I can count. <laughs> <laughs> and Bryce says he shows up to ReaperCon as well. Yeah, he, he teach teaches classes? at ReaperCon. Yes. yes, yes. Yeah, both these guys, both of these awesome people teach at ReaperCon. Bryce was the first high-end painter that do ever talked a, to me. Yeah, oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Do you have um? Do we have a price estimate on this yet, Justin? Uh, we, $900. Yeah. Nine for the, for the one of a kind? Million yeah. dollars. Yes. So we'll go with 900 and if it's less, then congratulations. Yeah, that's an Ed question. It will question. be less than $900. That's an Ed question. We can yeah. confirm less, that it's less than $900. Far less than $900. No idea if we're going to package a compressor with it. No idea on all any of that. You no. should ask tonight on Reaper Live because Ed is the one to pin with these questions. Absolutely. And he'll probably say something like, uh, we're working ask on Ask Aaron it. and I will have just left. Yeah, exactly. Ask Ann and I will have gone home yeah. already. Good times. All right. So we've got our white back down. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to build up this color with some white, and mm -hmm. then we're going to put the we're going to put our magenta back. I'm very over interested it. to see this. So here we go. Because some people might say, "Oh my god, oh my god." Also, we are two subs away from uh, getting a bonus dragon with the giveaway, and one lucky person will have the paints, the dragon, and then Aaron to show them how to actually use it. Yes, so, at least an errand for an hour. Yeah, that's pretty well, rad. Yeah, that's what I mean. Not not all. Can I win myself? That's the question. <laughs> so we see we're we're boosting look how cool those colors. That looks on the neck, it guys. actually does look really cool. Yeah, look at that overspray. Look at how it comes up with that pale, bruisey purple. I love it. Yeah. So so see, these are things that if you're paying attention, 
just in your base coding and stuff, mm -hmm. you start realizing, oh, this could happen. I, how could I use this later on? Right. Because obviously you could take that, you could glaze over it. You right. You do all kinds of or stuff with it. Over it. But yeah. these are little things that just like with your paintbrush and you find, oh, interesting things that happen on accident right. and then you use them to your advantage. So. Right. All right. Well, there's uh, we are now at 41 subs. Thank you, Al Bevison. Well, now he has to follow through on that free dragon. Fred. <laughs> you will get a free dragon. Dragon of my choice. Yes, dragon of Dustin's choosing. So if you notice, I'm kind of coming in close. Not like a super focused spray, but I'm coming in a little bit Fairly closer. Fairly close, like an yeah, inch and a half Yeah, to get a, a little bit more, and, half, and, then, yeah. and then I'll flick. Right, and you just kind of... So with each one, I'm building up. So normally, if I've painted, usually I paint the whole dragon because I want my lighting to be consistent right, through consistent. the whole thing. Yep. And the airbrush allows me to do that. When you're painting by hand, it might take a... Ages. Three days to get don't, the... You don't know. even talk to me about my creature caster thing, okay? Yeah. Just don't even talk to me about don't it. Don't talk to me. My creature caster thing is all over I-94. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> hey, I, maybe I, I have a chance to win then. <laughs> I don't have to win. <laughs> um, but yes, that that's exactly it. So you can get very quickly, get excited about the model, and then, yep. and then what I like is my favorite part of miniature painting is the details. Yep. I mean, yeah, that's me where too. it all is, me right? Too. That's yeah. where you start getting excited. All the and you're fun. Like, I can stay up Details and finishes. textures yeah. and yeah, yeah. So this is the part, we're getting this out of the way. Who right. cares? It doesn't matter. Right. We're giving so. us something to work from. Right, It's like right. spewing a rough draft out of a book you're writing. You just spew the rough draft out. Who cares how bad it is? And then you go in and you make it awesome. Did I run out of paint? I thought I just... Whoop. So, clogged a little bit. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take, make sure that my needle... White is a very needle. opaque and high... So, high size, high yeah. grind. Paint. The lighter your color, the quicker you'll dry tip. So that was a little bit of dry tip, kind uh -huh. of clogged my airbrush, yep. and it happens very quickly. Yes. Um, other colors, like uh, one that's probably the quickest dry tipping color I know of is Citadel's Mornfang Brown. Yeah. And I don't know why. It's a darker color. It should not dry tip at all. I'll bet you it will it, dry tip so quickly. I'll bet you it has uh, everything to do with the pigment grind, and certain browns do have very it large pigment is. grind. But so I love the color, so I'm like, well, you just got to deal with it. Yep. So yep. one of the things that I do is I constantly check my needle, my, my dry tip on my needle. That's uh -huh. your first clog. So how do you play with that again? So, Take off the thing. Show me how you... I got a clog. Oh, oh no. What do I do? So normally you can just grab my fingers in without taking kind anything of off it. and just yeah, kind just of slide yeah them. i just use my fingernails and just kind of scrape it you could yeah. use a lot of people use a q-tip it takes okay. forever and you're ripping the q-tip off it's yeah just that just sounds bad the quickest way take that first cap off and just rub the pads of your fingers boom done you're done okay and you have so, it yeah and your pads of your fingers aren't going to bend the needle yeah so you're good. no 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 you're you're totally fine so yeah Put that on, give it a hard spray, which is all paint, all, 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 like all air, all paint. So yep. boom, boom, hard spray, I'm good, good to go. So it sprays again, maybe do a test spray on the side, I think I'm good to go. Yeah, I like that. So spray. now I'll just, I just keep, uh, keep on keeping on. Oops. Yes, Omega Sticks, or OMG Sticks, random and paint facts, you bet. That's what I'm here for. Aaron's got the skills and I got the chemistry. I love the effect on its neck. I'm just can't. I'm eat, just like eating it up. I love the effect on the neck. So now I can start going. Okay, what are things that I want to do f future? Future tints on this model. So let's say like maybe the sides of his jowls back here. Uh -huh. Maybe yeah. I want them to be a brighter color. Maybe I want to bring in like a, a like a brighter blue or something. Yeah, or lime green or some teal yeah. tones or something. Yeah. So maybe I want to I want to do a little bit of a highlight back there. So I can always do my airbrush and without even masking anything off, I can just start pumping up my being, color yeah, back just there. Just get closer so you can do. Yeah, do a little bit take more. Closer and so it's all about the light pressure, really. It's mastering pressure. Yeah. On this. Now you see, every once in a while, I get a little bit of speckling, but that's that's white for you. Right. Um, it's one thing that I really love about the Steiner Res is mm -hmm. it it really doesn't it's speckle. It's super fine. It's yep. crazy, yep. and I don't understand it because it's a primer. Yeah, but they probably <laughs> use a super fine pigment in it. Yeah, it might. That might be it. So let's say I went down the front of this. Maybe I went a little bit a little bit brighter as well. So I'll bring in a little bit right there. Catch his chest. Yeah. Chest. So, and then we'll get Dragons rid of this white. Pour that back in. Do my little spray out here. Again, just get rid of most of that. Now, I always use a cup because I want to be able to see the spray. 
and you can kind of see the spray that's coming out here. Uh -huh. I want that nice and forceful. I don't want it to start doing something like that where it's kind of sputtering. Yeah, sputtering. That means that I'm clogging on the inside, inside mm, my nozzle. Not good. So this one actually looks pretty good. That white might have been a little bit not thinned enough also, but but I'm just rocking and rolling and I know we're covering right. it, so I don't care. So spray it till it's all gone. Yeah, which sometimes takes longer than you want, but this is the best part of the show, just watching me spray out <laughs> water. Yes. Okay, so we just talked about what happens if you're, or your, your nozzle getting clogged. Um, yeah. What did I do with my needle? Dralkri, it's, uh, yeah, it's paints, lots of sets of paints. Uh, Justin threw in a dragon, and one person will actually get a one-hour lesson with Aaron Lovejoy here, which he does on, like, Google Hangouts or, you know, whatever you want to do. Yeah. Yep, there's Aaron. One hour. Okay, so if my, oh. <laughs> I was We're like, I said there was me. <laughs> um, so if I am, uh, if my nozzle seems like it's clogged, like I was having that sputtering problem, yep. that means that there's paint starting to grow on the inside, inside of my nozzle, okay? okay? We can't see it, you never will. Right. So my way of fixing this is I take my needle and I gently, and I mean gently, scrape right. the inside of the nozzle. With the actual needle. So I can actually feel... You are such a freaking brave man. I can actually feel, like in this one, this is a clogged nozzle, so that's why I picked it. Okay. Um, I can actually feel the, resistance. the paint. Yeah, the resistance. Uh, not only the resistance, like sometimes it doesn't have any resistance, uh -huh. but, but I can actually feel it softer than, oh, than, interesting. Metal, than metal on metal. So I can okay. actually go around. This is uh, one of my, this was for my airbrush at, Re at LVO, and I, I just never cleaned it. Um, <laughs> Corby, he's also an expert at just regular brush painting. He's an amazing painter. So if, if you don't want to have an airbrush lesson, if you win the one with Aaron, he can give you brush tips. Yeah, exactly. So you can almost, I think you can see that little bit. It looks yeah, like a Yeah, a little bit head. of stuff coming and out of And this is like the best feeling in the world, especially if your airbrush is still spraying paint. And yeah. you're like, okay, I'm not clogged, uh -huh. but I see things are happening that are not supposed to be happening. Right, like you the got some blockage. The best time to unclog your airbrush is when it's not clogged completely. Okay, so stop <laughs> If right it then. goes stop all the way, clean. you're in trouble. Right. So I'll just come in. This one's really clogged. I don't know what I did. <laughs> now sewer is hashtag free to enter. So... So yeah, so that's how I would clean my nozzle, and then once so all that. So you don't paint, use a solution to like right. really unclog it or anything. I, you, if it's real, like this one's actually really bad. Um, I would take like one of my salsa cups like this, and uh -huh. I just throw it in there, put it some isopropyl in there, uh -huh. let it set for let ten it minutes, set for a bit, and then go back um, at get it. it a little bit juicy. But this this part right here is where your airbrush clogs. Right, period. the nozzle. Once that's completely clogged, then things start going backwards because if it can't go forwards, it's it going to go backwards. Build up. It's yep. got to go somewhere. Yep. So that's when you start having paint coming out of your trigger and all yeah. those things are really, really bad. And, bad stuff. And now your cleaning process is huge. Yeah. But if you do this like... So catch it quick. Yeah. I do this. I, I actually do this right after I prime. Okay. Because primer, primer is, is made to stick on everything. Yep. And then I also do it at the very end of my session. And if for some reason I clog like really bad. But right. usually you don't have this problem. If you're if the inside of your nozzle is clean, you shouldn't have this problem at all. So now my um, my needle has gone back through. I don't think you can even see that. I can well see maybe it. you can. Yeah, we can yeah. see it on the camera. So so uh, when you first get your airbrush, I measure or I memorize how far my needle comes out the front. I see. So on a Patriot 105, it's an eighth of an inch. Okay. On this, it's like sixteenth of an inch. Oh. So you want your needle to always be sixteenth of an inch long. Gotcha. If paint starts to grow on the inside, your mm -hmm. needle starts growing, going backwards. Oh, interesting. So you've got a. So you've this got is a great way of judging. Without your, with you could be spraying fine, uh -huh. no problems at all. If everything. But if your perfect, needle is shrinking, then you stop. You see, you know right. that maybe on the next clean out, uh -huh. I'm gonna I'm gonna clean it better. Pull everything out. And, and unclog it because right. I guarantee you it's very easy at that point. You saw how much I had to work at this one. Yeah, yeah. That was like a bunch of days ago. It was yes. Sunday when I finished airbrushing. So, um, yeah. So, anyways, keeping that nozzle clean is the mm -hmm. most important thing. Once you've got that, your parameter of your airbrush being clogged is no longer an issue. Right. And now it's just your paint's too thick or your paint's too thin or, or you have a huge chunk in your paint or something. Right, right. But if you knew your airbrush, if your nozzle was clean completely to begin with, mm -hmm. you don't have a problem. Interesting. So yeah, cool. it's a really cool way to do that. Cool. All right, let me put my needle back in. Um, when you're pushing your needle back in, always make sure that you hear air coming out or there's a 
pushback because if your uh, if your trigger is up, you'll actually hit the the metal and Ooh. bend your needle. So that would be bad. So I just always make sure, boom, 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 it's in there. Um, also, uh, Proctor had a nice uh, comment too oh. on what you said. You never want your needle to shrink. Life lesson. <laughs> Thanks for taking it back to Lovejoy territory leave it, there, Leave it to Proctor. Yep. It's a man after my own heart. So I'm going to clean that a little bit more. One other thing, um, sometimes when I'm doing my hard sprays, um, trying just to, sometimes there's a little bit of a clog and just bam, bam, and it's unclogged. Okay. Perfect. But sometimes you gotta, you got to move your needle back. And okay. I, I call it's it juicing the needle. I just wiggle it a little bit. Uh -huh. And hopefully that dislodges something. Again, I don't want to be in the bathroom cleaning. Right. So lock it back down and hit it. The thing you don't want to do is what I used to do. And okay. I'd go, I want to really clear that. And I'd pull my needle way back Ooh. like this. And what happens, if you have a cup full of paint, it sucks it right oh, back. Oh, no. Right? Yeah, so now the, all that paint's back Just there. Went back and you there. can have other problems that oh, no. are bad. Oh, so. that's awful. All right, so we'll get this. What the heck did I just do? All right. So I'll spray that out. I'm super impatient most of the time, so I just pour it out and then spray it out. All right, we're good to go. Now, if you're going, say, from white to our magenta, and I don't want my magenta, I don't want to, we're, we're talking about 100% capabilities of the paint. Mm -hmm. If I throw white in it, I've just desaturated it, yep. so my saturation is gone, well, maybe not to hell, but, you know, right. it's not as good. You can always remove saturation, right. but you can't get it back. Right, right, it's very hard. Yes. Well, it's, yeah, it's pretty much impossible. So. You don't want to use your brush because, again, we have the paint flicking yep. up. So I just use a paper towel and wipe it. Oh, whatever still not with whatever. the huge raid. Oh, Whoa. hey, C-Not, thanks. 130 people. Welcome, wow. welcome yeah. there, C-Not. Better put my shirt back on. <laughs> yeah, please do, please do. So this is kind of party Anne do you think with this Reaper is? Miniatures, and we have Aaron Lovejoy, our special guest today, hey. who is demoing airbrushing because I'm useless at it, and he's an expert pro. Legendary. And we have the new Reaper Vex, so super yes. legit airbrush that Reaper is going to be selling pretty soon. Yeah, Reaper and Badger airbrushing got together and had a love child, and it is the new Badger Vex airbrush. It has the little Reaper stamped on it in gold. It's really They had sexy. a love joy. <laughs> they had a love joy. Oh, no. Uh, it's getting weird. It's getting weird. <laughs> getting a little weird in here, but with him, it always is Yeah, weird it's in always here. weird. Always. It, it works out. We're good. <laughs> so, yeah, see not then, then definitely, like, once this is up on YouTube, uh, yeah, you should come back. Because Aaron's got some great cleaning tips and stuff like that, uh, and tips in general. He's, he really is a pro. He does, he does it for a living, and... Uh, He's just really, I'm, I'm very much admiring. I'm not taking nearly as many notes as I need to, so I'm going to be rewatching this also. Mm. It's perfect. All right. And we're also, for all the new people getting in here, every five subs, we're giving away all of the paints he's using there and uh, a dragon model to be, to be you know, completely chosen by, Justin. chosen by me. Not the one he's currently painting. That is for Bones 5 and it's not out. So <laughs> don't think it's that one. Just we're on the same page. Oh, now, you, now you're even subbed to our channel, see not. So oh, now you got no excuse because Bal Balrog just like subbed you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, and we're giving away also for one person, um, we're giving away a one hour lesson with Aaron. Uh, and you could obviously do that over Google Hangouts or Skype or whatever you're going to do. That's right. So. Or you can fly out. That would be yeah. ridiculous. That but. would be ridiculous, but pretty awesome. An excuse to visit. Uh, you're in Atlanta now, aren't you? Uh, yeah, we're in, uh, actually more by Augusta. Oh, okay. But All like right. two hours from Atlanta. All right. Like that. Oh, you my. Got a, you <laughs> got a guest room? Cool. There you go. We're at 43 subs, whoever asked that. Kieran Nico, did you just uh, see my Voltron Kitties t shirt? My kitties playing Voltron dress up. It is pretty awesome. Thank you. I'm glad somebody noticed. All right. So we've done our blue from below. We've done a magenta over it to see how that built up. Um, and then we've put white. Uh, to bump our colors, and now I'm going to spray the magenta back over it. So again, you want to kind of keep at your angles so that you're using your airbrushes working for you instead mm -hmm. of against you. So the really cool thing is this, you see that color is super vibrant. Yeah. So depending on how much I put on, so I, if I'm putting it on it in 10% in sprays, which I think maybe this nozzle, I should have cleaned this nozzle, maybe this nozzle is dirty now. I think we're okay. All right, we're okay. Um, so if we're constantly doing those 10% sprays, I can control the vibrancy of my color now. Right. So that's what we're gonna do. We'll just keep bumping it up. 
Oof, look at that. Maybe, maybe I'll go overboard a little bit just so you can see it. But usually what I do when I'm, when I'm airbrushing, I want to go to a certain point and then right. I want to paintbrush the rest. Right, right. So I can, then I can further control exactly where my saturation is and right. stuff like that. So um, maybe I'll go around about to here. I'm going to get a little bit behind some of these details. So I don't want white to be like my shadow. Oh, right, that would be yeah. really weird. Yes. Um, so if I just keep practicing, but see, that's looking, that's that really actually looks really aggressive. Yeah. Like, yeah, the head is really aggressive. This looks like her <laughs> husband just walked in with muddy feet and she's like going to kill him. <laughs> yes, yes. You're going down. Get out of my cave, you ingrate. <laughs> exactly. So I can come in up here. I still, I still love the effect on the neck because of the overlapping scales and the spray. You're almost convincing me to whip out my airbrush, Aaron. Keep it up. Keep it up. <laughs> you want to try to win that <laughs> free private coaching? <laughs> <laughs> I would fly J out. Joke's on you because I would talk to you about airbrushing anytime. Just, I know, just because. I know. Well, you're a busy man, so I try not to like yeah, you with yeah. texts too often. A as, are, as are you. <laughs> yes, I know. You don't even want to know. know. <laughs> All of us in the industry, it's like, man, we just... There's no lazy uh, miniature painters. I yeah, think, if we're out there making a living in the industry, we are not lazy. So again, I can always come back to spots and keep, um, you notice I'm, I'm always spraying on my hands too. Like I usually look like I have some sort of weird disease, you know, I'll just <laughs> boom, 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 get that. Okay, what do we got going? It's not coronavirus because it's not pneumonia. We're all okay. Yeah. And, and a busy man, let's, let's, not, <laughs> let's hope not or my boyfriend will be very surprised. Yeah. <laughs> What the heck? Hey, Jacob, how you doing? So I'm going to... Hey, Jacob. I'm hanging out watching Aaron, like, put me to shame and show how an airbrush is, like, amazing and I should be using one, even though I don't. So he's only... Well, we should have done, we should have done one episode of me airbrushing. The second episode, you take that model and start detailing it. Oh, yeah, that would be but pretty we don't, awesome. We don't, we don't think that quick. Yeah, We're we not. don't. We're... So I'm curious, Aaron. Yeah. If you're completely new to all of this, would you suggest someone learn how to paint with a paintbrush first or could they pick this up and mm. then go to the other it's this weird some of the uh, the thing is the thing that would like kind of separate the two in my mind is exactly what Aaron was bringing up earlier about opacity um, when you're using a paintbrush uh, you know you get paint that's paints that's uh, looks opaque if you're spraying it through an airbrush might be very transparent when you're applying it through a paintbrush and so whereas normally I'd say well maybe you could learn a bit about paint consistency actually what it's going to do is confuse you yeah because <laughs> you're going to be like wait this covered just great out of the airbrush why isn't it covering when I'm using a paintbrush um, it's, it's an interesting thing because um, I feel very lucky that I learned to paint and then I got an airbrush right and I think I um, would feel the I same think some people I've noticed uh, you know a lot of people they get their airbrush right off the bat mm -hmm. and it actually hinders them from learning how to paint because you can I mean you can I mean this looks great and if you're playing D&D, &D, okay, I'm done. I'm yeah, done with the right. paint job. But, you know, then you come to ReaperCon, you're like, I'm going to enter the same thing in a contest because it looks fantastic, but it's not painted. Right, right. Okay? It's not, like, so detailed. So, at the end stuff. of the day, I think a good paint job, you can't tell how you did it. I right. don't know how you did it. Did you do it by hand? Did, did you right. just, you know, miraculously it, it appeared? Yeah. I don't know. So, that's that's the key. But the, the one big problem with the airbrush is you do get smooth blends, mm -hmm. or you can get smooth blends. Mm -hmm. um, and so sometimes that hinders people from actually taking the time to learn how to do a blend by hand. Right. Because it takes a long time to learn that. Right. So, it almost behooves you to start off with a paintbrush, um, learn some basic skills, yep. and then maybe do both. Because the airbrush is where I started learning how light falls on fabric, mm -hmm. on, on a mm -hmm. dragon's wing that's super bumpy. Yeah. How would that look? Well, I spray it like this. Oh, that's how it looks. Yeah, because that's yeah. how light. It's a good really tool fall. for that, right? So, um, it really, it really taught me a lot of things. But, but would I have learned how to layer or have extremely smooth blends by hand? Right. Normally, and the I thing you sacrifice is the fine motor control you need to do really fine right, detail. Right. Where you have to learn that with a brush, yeah. you really aren't going to get like micro detail. Yeah. With and, the and that micro detail with the brush, I mean, almost helps you more on the airbrush side of things because mm -hmm. then you start learning, okay, like when I'm pulling my trigger on my airbrush, you'll see most of it is like no, no paint, no paint, no paint. And then just a little, like I, I just keep pulling back a little bit further each time. So right. you know when you're doing freehand, you, you pull the brush, pull the brush and nothing happens and yeah. you don't see the brush hit, you see the paint 
no. happen. Right. And that's how the airbrush is. Right. So I you don't, can develop I your don't instincts. see my finger go back. I right. see that little spot of paint come out. Right. And so a lot of times when I'm doing final details with inks and stuff, I have my reading glasses on or my Optivisor on. So I'm really, really close. And I'm literally seeing when just a minute amount of paint comes out of my airbrush. Yeah. And, but the thing is, my colors are all so strong mm -hmm. that, that it makes a huge difference in the paint job. Right. But right. it's just the right amount. Right. You know, so yeah. it's, it's really nice because when I'm driving final shadows at the very end, mm -hmm. I can be very, very precise with exactly how much I want. You right. Know? right. And I can always put a little bit in and come back two days from now and go, I think I can go a little bit deeper. You right, know? right. Yeah, so you can get another it, it, hit. It's right. kind of fun that way, you know. And then I use all the other time that I have to make styrations on the you know, on the scales and stuff, mm -hmm. because that's got to be done with your paintbrush. Right. You know? Right. Oh. What happened? Nothing. Oh. Nothing. Yeah. Justin's doing crazy that. things. Ignore that. Right. It's fine. I think that right also, now it's a black dragon in a goth nightclub with pink overhead lights. Yeah. Also, there. thank you for the raid earlier. Whoever, whoever that was. was C-Not did a... Did no, a well, we raid. had another raid from someone. Um, MSL, I... Anna, I believe, is what yeah. it, who it was. I, I said thank you for it. So yep. yeah, learn your brush skills, then learn your airbrush skills, and then rule the world. Yes, and then push them together and just squeeze. <laughs> <laughs> so this is this is very vibrant. Like if you were in a if you were in a game store, and actually I've always wanted to ask you this, Ann. Uh oh. Uh oh. So here's my here's my theory on color. Uh huh. Um, so the more the more uh, saturated a color is, mm -hmm. I believe that our eyes love saturated color. Yeah, yeah, they, they just do. absolutely love it, yep. right? They lock on it. Um, so uh, I had a I had a customer who ordered a really high end commission from us, and it was an army, and we painted it blue, and it looked fantastic. And I was on cloud nine, went to the convention, went over to his table to go gloat over my impressive paint uh -huh. jobs that me and Alan did, and um, and it looked horrible. Oh, in the lighting, it, oh, looked, the it looked lighting. absolutely horrible. And, and, and I was like, my heart sunk because this guy had spent $6,000 on this army. It was a small army, too. He right. wanted everything But he wanted end. everything really yes. high-end, right. And I almost, I was like, oh, my God, I got to get out of here. <laughs> like, he's going to be really, <laughs> really upset. And But I picked up a model, and I, up close, I was like, oh, no, no, no. This is a really, this is like a legit good paint job. Right. But it really, really bugged me that you couldn't see it in the in the gaming room. Right. And that's where most of our paint jobs go. You know, I had a, I have a couple private coaching students that they're like, when I play D&D, &D, my terrain looks horrible. Mm -hmm. And I've put in all this time, and it just looks, it's dark in our room. There's not enough yeah, lighting. Yeah, yeah. And, and so I always tell them the, the answer is saturated color, mm -hmm. like period. Yeah. So if you have very saturated, vibrant colors, mm -hmm. um, th those will almost show up in the dark. Mm -hmm. And um, and so um, and then desaturated colors go away. Yes, so if they you do. want to control the right attention in. on your model, mm -hmm. you saturate you saturate that area. Right. Now it doesn't have to look like this. No, super it doesn't vibrant. have to look like dragon. It just and has Goth to be nightclub. more saturated than the areas around it. Right. And suddenly you can see it. Now, if you want you want this to be seen in the dark of a game store. This dragon's going to show up from right, across the room. Right, like, no You have to really overblow it. So really... I don't know if there's a science behind that or what, but <sighs> it just works. It's like observation for me well, at this point. Well, it is true visually that a very saturated bright, for those of you who don't know the terminology we're using, uh, saturated bright, not necessarily light, not light, but, but bright, bright. Yeah. really eye screaming bright, like fluorescent colors are really bright, you know. Um, but the eye will catch that color faster even if it's tiny. I think we're trained and, to because when the yeah. daylight comes on, like think of it at nighttime mm -hmm. and it's getting dark and, and things become uninteresting. Like I can't see your whole body. I just right. see parts. And um, when I painted Vermithrax, yeah. God rest his soul, um, he had a, a really bright glowy part in the front. Like I wanted the flames from his inner, like yeah. he's about to burn you, you know? Yeah. So I made that really bright. And I did a test in my in my um, studio and I we have a, the lights on a dimmer. And so I mm -hmm. dimmed, I just kept dimming it. And eventually, even though he had big red wings, those showed up a little bit longer than obviously the black parts of him. But the last thing that I could see when my room was almost dark was that it was splotch. That glowing it spot. didn't look yellow, but I could right. see it. Yes. And so, like, you know, you can do a test. Like, uh, I remember Jeremy Bonamont used to always take his models and he'd put them under the table. To and see, see how like, they I can read. see if I can see it, you know? Yep. And so he goes, well, that's how they're going to judge it in the contest, in the Now dark. we know, right? <laughs> yeah. In the dark. So, it's so true. It's super true. That's the way it is. <laughs> but, but so, and also that saturated color will create volume. Mm -hmm. So if you want something to look closer or bigger, yes. like say you have this big barbarian dude and he has big round shoulders and you mm -hmm. feel like your painting's being flat, uh -huh. 
saturate it. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to all be yep. saturated, just in an area, and it will actually come forward. And the bigger you make it, the more the, more the color shows up and the more intense the color will look. That's right. another rule. That's why when you, when you look at a paint, like in the paint store, to put on your wall, and you're like, oh, that's a nice light yellow, and then we go home and you throw it on the wall, and it's suddenly the brightest yellow you've ever seen. It's because the bigger an area a color takes up, the more bright and intense the color will look. And that's just, that's how our human eyes see it. So that's our color theory 101 yeah. today. Yeah, there we go. Got some but Anyways, got some I always wanted in. to talk to you about that yes. because you do this stuff. And we know? never like, have time at the conference. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, I've, I've noticed it over the years and mm -hmm. I actually use it in my painting now, mm -hmm. like to really good effect. But it's like, okay, is this actually a thing? It's or a is thing. it just an accident? Or <laughs> I was actually watching, uh, I watch a lot of 2D painting videos mm -hmm. and um, I've actually been watching a lot of movie making videos mm -hmm. on how they color movies and mm -hmm. stuff. It's very interesting for mm -hmm. what we do. Yes. Because it, it all correlates. And um, and I finally saw a guy that, I, he was a 2D uh, oil painter, and mm -hmm. that's, he said, how to make something three-dimensional. And his his thing was saturate it. Yep. His yep. saturated colors come forward. And I yep. was like, yes, volume. When someone yep. says create and more volume. it's contrast also. Yes. It's contrast. It, it is. Because the human eye is tuned to contrast. Right. Because part of it is when you do a zenithal prime, when it's white-black, mm -hmm. I see the volumes. Yes. So that's not saturated at all. Right. So it's that's not just, just saturation, but saturation is easy mode. Right, right. Like it will saturation is an easy way for yes. contrast to happen. Like, yeah. <laughs> and also if you wanna if you like if your face was just bright yellow, uh -huh. like that's all I could see in this room. Right. You know? Yes. So that it, it, that's how you can control, like mind control where someone looks. If someone's looking at this dragon right now, all they can look at is the head right. because it's the most saturated. Right. And then their eyes will travel around. Right. That's and the first place around, they'll go. But, but right. I've controlled how you look at that model. Yes. And maybe there's a part of the model that's a little fugly or you didn't do as much on. <laughs> yes. I, 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 in yeah. the shop we go, we paint things to go away. So right. I'm like, okay, desaturate these areas, boom, they're gone. Yep. Yep. And I guarantee you, canvas no one painters will, do it all yeah, the time. No one will ever look at the parts you don't want them to look at. Right, right. You know? yeah. Unless it's me or you, and we're like, you right. forgot to do this. <laughs> well, yeah, that's us. <laughs> <laughs> Only if you ask us for a critique, then we'll be yeah. all, all so, with you about so it. So if something's looking flat or not not um, bold enough, just saturate more. And yes. oftentimes, saturation makes it darker, but it's brighter. Yeah, yeah. And that's the hard the thing weirdest, to get over. Because a saturated yes. blue is actually a darker blue. It's a darker blue. blue is innately yes. a, a saturated blue. But it, yeah. will, it will like explode from the tabletop. So yes. there you go. So there All you right. are. And also, that's what clear brights are good for. People, yay clear brights. Yes, because they are saturated. Yes. <laughs> also, I hate to be that guy, but... Uh, it's almost time. If the show goes too much longer, this is just going to be Reaper Live. Okay. <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> so I mean, Ed, Ed and... Aaron will be there too. <laughs> I'm Ed. This is Ron. <laughs> All right, perfect. Uh, we'll give Ron the night off, get it, give Ed the night off. Right. I don't think they'll like that, though. Well, I think we covered kind of a lot. Kind and, of a lot, and, yeah, and considering the, we have a very short time frame. Yeah, I mean. the Vex is rocking, mm -hmm. so I'm super excited about it. I mean, I've been excited about it for a long time, and yes. I feel really bad that no one else has been able to use it. I know, <laughs> I know. Well, that's me. I've been painting Dance of Death on, uh, on Toolbox, and it's like not even available till this summer. Right. So I'm like, right. I'm spending these hours and hours and hours painting this wonderful dragon fight that yeah. isn't even available. Like, this is so cool. No, not 900. Sorcery brush, that was totally just a making a joke. No, no, under 900. Oh, People geez. were quoting it at 900. And I like that quote. The brush will cost under, under 900. 900. Under yes, 900. Yes, exactly. So do you guys have, before we like let him let him run off, do you guys have any questions for Aaron? Because we can wrap with a little bit Q&A here. So is there anything about airbrushing that you've always wondered that he didn't cover um, that you'd like to ask now? Let's see. Let's see. Great show for an airbrush beginner. Thank you, Sashar. The other thing with your airbrush is you just got to use it. Yeah. I mean, it's practice. like anything well, it's else. If you don't, if it's you don't, just like it's painting. It's the same, same thing. Yep. And I say Reaper's made a ton of terrain, you know, in the last couple of years. Yep, yep. Grab and it. Good know what, nobody's ever said that terrain looks horrible. Yeah. Terrain you know? is easy and forgiving. You can practice on it. You can paint it over and over again. And that's that's what I learned on was terrain. Mm. PSI. 40 PSI, I believe. 40. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so most people, that's way out of control. So yeah. I'd say start at 20-ish. Unless you've never airbrushed before, start at 40. You yeah, then you'll the just difference. get used to it. Yeah, you yeah. don't know the difference. Yeah, it's like, the, it's like um, uh, mouse sensitivity when you're playing shooters. It's like if you start at a certain level, don't change it just because some pro uses yeah. a different level. Right. You're used to that level, so you're going to be better at that level. And, and also, everyone's different, right? Everyone uses a different size paintbrush. Um, you might be more comfortable at 20, 25, and that's fine. Yeah. But, but 40's way better. Aaron, if you were a tree, what kind of tree would you be? That's what Michael Proctor says. A blue one. A blue one. Yeah. Airbrush versus wet blending for a complete noob. 
Oh, I think wet blending is, well, no, for wet. complete noob. Oh, that's a hard one. That's a hard one because wet blending is very touchy. <laughs> yeah, it is, but some people, like kids, so, like so, get it right so away. So both are easy to do. Right. If, like, say, take a class. Seriously. Right. Take a class you know, and Take see. a couple classes on each. Learn sort of the parameters of it, and I guarantee you that you'll be like one step ahead of everyone else. It right. took me seven years to learn to wet blend. Yeah. You know, because I was trying to figure out why didn't it work. You know, it was like oh so long to figure things out. And some people get it right away. And wet blending is one of those things. Like I've taught an 11 year old kid who got who I showed wet blending, and five minutes later he was a pro. So some people get it, and I think it matters what kind of the country you're in, if it's really arid, and you know, yeah, uh, who knows, the phase of the weather, moon, yeah, all the rest of it. So try both, see which one feels better. Um, Aaron, where can we find you? Talk to us about your Patreon and Miniature Monthly uh, and all that stuff. I am over at Miniature Monthly. Um, that is a Patreon for miniature painting, um, similar to Anne's, um, which is awesome as well. Thank you. Uh, I do private, I have private coaching spots available, um, one hour and two hour spots. Um, the which links right are in now the chat. I could, what's oh, that? Links are in the chat. Links are in the, the chat. links are in the chat. All right. They're right there. Um, which, quite honestly, I could probably use the help because we lost everything in the car crash. So. Oh, yeah. So everybody go pledge <laughs> so to Miniature you wanna, Monthly if for you wanna, month. If you want to do, yeah, I mean, even a month or two months or six or whatever, um, you know, it's not very much. And you get some really cool painting videos. We have Elizabeth Beckley and Matt DiPietro are both on there as well. Yeah, they get so, guest artists. So there's there's a lot. There's different styles. So if my style isn't your style, who cares? You, I was going to ask you if I could do one for you guys sometime. Yeah, oh, yeah, totally. We That'd like be We've been talking about, like, switching off, you know, like, you get a sample of ours, we get a sample of yours oh, that'd or whatever. Oh, that'd be great. That'd be super fun. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, right now, uh, we need a little help. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm not so. one to normally ask for help, but um, so if you want to sign up for one of my available private coaching spots for a month or two or whatever, um, they're awesome, you know, and, and you get to ask questions and I do Photoshop paint overs and we do live demos and all that stuff. Um, or if you just want to sit there and watch a couple videos, that's totally cool too. Um, so that's that, and I don't know what else I do. Yeah, I think you're, if you're I do Facebook, commission painting, but I'm swamped. So oh, okay, I, yeah, that, I wonder. Like, uh, uh, you know, it's kind of one of those weird things where you're like, okay, I'm swamped, and I'm also broke now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, well, it's because but, you always sign up commissions in advance, whereas your well, Patreon part of, is part the part of the problem was is uh, several of my commissions were destroyed in the crash. Oh, so you're like, gonna have to redo. not just destroy like they are gone. Someone asked about the dragon, and yeah. you will see it on Reaper Live. You'll see what's left of the dragon. You'll see. Why it was unfixable. <laughs> and you will see how, how lucky we are to still have an errand with yeah. us. Yeah, so yeah. that was very exciting. But but you know what? I'm super happy to be here. And, and you know, obviously, there's still things to do. So we're going to do them. Yes. Awesome. <laughs> you know, I'm lucky enough not you to be super hurt. You will now do all hurt, the things. You know? Yes. I mean, we got whiplash. My back hurts, all this stuff. But, but I, I can still teach the children how to paint. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. As Bobby Jackson says, Bobby I keep Jackson sculpting says, the little pewter yeah. people. We'll, yeah, just, yeah. we'll just keep moving forward because you really can't look back. Yes, so. you really can. So, good tips. Yeah, so give Aaron a help. Go to his Patreon. Take a look. See if there's something you can sign up for. Even if it's only for a month, you can really help him out. I've kind of been in this situation when I was in yeah. New York visiting Bobby Wong. My car got broken into and they stole all my stuff. <laughs> It's like, you got to be kidding me. Yeah, yeah so, yeah, yeah. and so yeah, that, I, I have I'm been in that situation <laughs> where I'm like, I'm a freelance artist, and I am now really behind. Yeah, and broke. yeah, so, I mean, that was yeah. that was just the miniatures, but then we had yeah. computers back then. Oh, I mean, we had, wow. You know, we had stuff that, you know, we Equipment use, you really needed that's expensive We use every day, and not necessarily just for work, but, you know, or not really for work, but, like, just other stuff, and it was Life just stuff. like, every, yeah, everything's just gone, and you're like, okay, well, we start replacing all this stuff, and, you It's know. a hit. It's yeah, a big it hit. is. So, but... But the good news is the Reaper Vex is coming out. And that's yeah. All that Yay. <laughs> all right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for coming along with us on this elongated tutorial ride. But it was oh, super yeah. fun. We should have Aaron in more often. I'm having a lot of oh, fun. Oh, I actually loved it. So oh, good. Yeah. Good. Yeah, last yeah. time I came by, I didn't even think about it. We just popped in, like, right, and announced. Right. And they're like, oh, are you going to do Reaper Live tonight? And I'm like, we got to go. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, shoot, yeah. I should have thought, had forethought, you know. Yes, so, yes, yes. So, Woo. and you know what? This was kind of therapy <laughs> for me. Michael Proctor so. says your lips still look good. No, yeah. So years, buddy. <laughs> the lips were not harmed in the so accident. So years. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, I guess that'll wrap it. Justin, you're going to do our uh, our free picks? Yes, I am. All right. Who's going to win today? Drum roll, please. Yes. Yeah, Aaron's got to do it. That, that's part of it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, that doesn't work. I drew one. Proctor won one of these. He can't actually win, right? <laughs> You're my boy, Blue. <laughs> Did he win the free private coaching? Because the 
<laughs> that would be hilarious. No, Super funny. I haven't drawn that one yet. I'm really gonna, awkward. I'm, You're welcome, Rex. I'm going to draw the mm. basic ones first. So let's see here. All, All right. right. Who's got our basic ones? Our eight winners. Okay, these are our... This gets a dragon and then all the paints you saw. Um, our winners are Old Beans. I'm going to go ahead and announce these. Yes, old, you old won, beans. Clever Crow. You're right. You won. Uh, Finally. R- <laughs> Ryan's uh, 44. Acid Burn Punk. Jono 42. Lazoral. I think is how that's pronounced. Uh, Corsair 1961. Woo-hoo. Josh and Min. And Salazar Whiff. Those are our eight winners of Paints and the Dragon. Uh-oh. So now let's draw the Grand Pie. Pie. Pies. 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 Grand Pies. 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 Yeah, it's Pies. <laughs> Grand in California We need a grand pies. <laughs> All right, you guys. Now this is the one we need a drum roll for. This is the oh. All right, <laughs> the winner of this is Valkyrie six two one. Woo! Oh, I approve wow. of your name, Valkyrie. Valkyrie is one of that my favorite the, things. Grand like winner. That. Yeah. Yeah. Woohoo! Congratulations, everybody. Valkyrie, I hope that you're like like so psyched because this guy is such a good teacher and. Totally worth it. So what do they do if they won, Ann? They need to email Justin at ReaperLive at ReaperMini.com. You need to give them your exact Twitch handle, so exactly as you spell it here. And you need to give him uh, your shipping address if you won paints, or you just probably need to talk to him about how to get in touch with Aaron uh, if you won the coaching. Yeah, yeah. I'll get with Aaron after this, and we'll figure out how we pass it on. So. Yeah. All right. With that being said, I uh, have a raid set up for us. Woo! Yeah, we're raiding. Um, we're gonna raid one of these. Uh, let's, from what I can tell here, I like to dig down at the bottom of the art list sometimes to just to get, boost a little yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah, to boost, like to boost some, of the, some of the some of the smaller streamers. Yeah, they're trying. People who are who are putting their all into it, and yeah. you know they're grinding every day. For sure. Um, real. Uh, this let's see here. This guy's name is Thunderhead eighty seven. It looks like he's painting some BattleTech minis. Oh, Ooh. Yeah. So I love BattleTech personally. Okay, so there we go. Anyway, all right, guys, I'm going to start this raid. All right, get ready. Spread the Reaper love. Remember, spread the Reaper love. Everybody oh. scream! Ah. Justin likes to see him cry as all their alerts come up. Right, Caesar? Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> it. That, yes, correct. I mean, there's nothing better in my opinion. Oh no! What? Twitch is Twitch is going crazy. Oh no! It's what not happened? it's not letting me raid people. <gasps> Why They're can't like, we raid? No, Aaron Lovejoy will not be doing that. Are you too many? That. Are we too many people? I, I don't know. That's it can't not the case. happen. Let's see here. Let's Come see on, Twitch. The man's always putting me down. Yep, it's the it, man. It's possible that the person I chose does not have raids enabled. Oh, hey, Grey Wolf. Uh, Grey Wolf Studio just joined very late. Show him the new bra- airbrush. Can we flip oh, camera? Oh, yes. Do that while I find uh, another way to fix this. Can you flip camera? There we go. Okay, right. there you go, Grey Wolf. This is it. Yes, and we'll show it tonight also. 6 p.m. Yeah. Central with Ed and Aaron's going to be on there too. Tainted Lovejoy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hashtag Tainted Lovejoy. Is that a thing? I like that. I like it too. Maybe it's the 80s in me. The 80s That's are right. coming to the fore. I love the 80s music. Me too. And Ron does too. You and Ron could just That's talk, right. you know. We could, we could do the Yes, the Reaper video. Vex or the Badger Vex or the both Vex. Yes, yeah. is its name and it's going to have the Reaper logo just like you see. This That's is right. the only existing prototype at this time. It is due out in quarter two, hopefully, of this year. That's right. So this is what it actually looks like. I'm putting it. Personally, putting I want to know why Ed called it the Vex. Like, does it vex him? Does like you know is is it meant to frustrate Ed? Is that why it's got that I, name? I think that might. Eighties could be it. Could yeah. be it. <laughs> or maybe we need to name a dragon like like Vexoramus or something, and you know, paint. It's it called like that. four different products the Vex, and it would just be super <laughs> confusing. <laughs> Which one will you get? Yes, art thou vexed? Yes. Ah, uh, he uses distilled water, Doc Hooligans. Ah, uh, yeah. If you have a uh, microbiologist friend, you can get deionized water, which is... You don't even need that. You just need a little kit. Um, They make machines. I used to do um, marine um, aquariums. Yeah, you can buy a small deionization. I don't know what a deionized means, but... Yeah. Oh, you're you're taking the ions out of the water. Uh, You're you're actually... It's it's kind of reverse... Well, reverse osmosis is different, but... um, But, yeah, it it really cleans up your water. Um, But just like distilled, it's not good to drink. You're taking a lot out of it. 
There we go. Okay, so I found another smaller uh, smaller dude? painter okay. streamer. Right. Yes. Are they going to actually him. let us raid? Uh, Get him. It, according to the Twitch, it's letting me. So okay, perfect. yay. So who is it? So it is uh, Nerd404UK. Okay. Well, it's, so there's a nerd. So. Spread the... Uh, let's go ahead and cut back here. The word. Um, say All goodbye, right. guys. Uh, Bye, guys. Goodbye, You'll see Aaron again in about an hour. That's yeah, right. yeah. We're but, gonna give uh, him a break so that he can, you know, take a take a bio and get some water and you know refresh himself before long, Ed runs him through the ringer. Long bathroom break. Uh, yes, <laughs> yes. All right, guys. Well, uh, you have a great night. Hopefully, we'll see you in an hour and spread the Reaper love. Keep being awesome. That's right. Indeedy. Thank you Keep for being having awesome. me. Bye, guys. It was good to see you all. See you, see you guys. all on Tuesday for my show. In morning. Bye.